Good morning, everybody. I'm out here with Adam from Moving Weight on his beautiful new boat. First time I've been on this thing. And uh, what's on the game plan today, Adam? We're gonna do a little bit of pompano fishing. Had a pretty good day yesterday, but that doesn't mean anything, pompano fishing. We're gonna go out the inlet here in about five minutes, run the beach, look for pompanos, and hopefully we have a good day, make some money, make an epic video. So Adam not only commercial fishes, but he also charters now. So if you guys are looking for a charter in the Jupiter area, this is your guy. You guys have seen all the stuff we've caught together. Um, he's fished here his entire life. He definitely put you on the fish, so I'm looking forward to a real good day. And we're going after one of Florida's most expensive fish today, the Florida pompano, like Adam said. We'll see you out there. Here's what we got going on. We just ran out the inlet, and the whole thing with pompano fishing is finding them. They could be way down there a couple miles on the beach, they could be way up there, but you gotta start somewhere. A lot of times when Adam runs the beach, I'll actually look for them skipping, physically jumping out of the water, but nobody that he's talked to this morning, including us, have not seen really any signs of pompano. There's a bunch of guys on the beach. Word got out that there was a good bite yesterday. So we're gonna just set up here, set up shop, and just wait for the pompano to come by. They're really highly migratory, pelagic inshore fish. You could think of them like that. They'll go all the way up to the Carolinas, all the way down to the Keys, and they just repeat that cycle through uh, temperature fluctuations throughout the year. So we got a big chicken rig with circle hooks, and you got these little floats right there. Um, it's kind of like a little piece of styrofoam that's colored. The color doesn't do that much besides just kind of like an indicator, but the purpose of this is to keep your sand flea suspended up because you don't want crabs or mainly for crabs to not get on your sand flea and rip them apart or your bait. So we got the little floats. So what we got for bait right here. Adam went ahead and got us some nice sand fleas. Those are blanched. They're like red, almost uh, looks like as if they were cooked now, because he parboils them for about yeah, a minute. And it actually up. makes them stay on the hook a lot better when you parboil them. I'm going to take this and I'm going to just hook them gently. You don't want to, you don't want to rip the sand flea. Multiple hooks gives you multiple chances because a lot of times they'll hit it and they won't get hooked, but a lot of times you'll get a double or triple. And since we're on Adam's boat, he's trying to move some weight and he's trying to make some money since he's going to be able to sell these fish. So you want to be as efficient as possible, have as many hooks in the water as possible. That way you catch as many as possible. We were fishing eight yesterday. Eight rods? Yeah, we had three guys working the rods. So when you're all getting bites, three, three is a perfect number. And Victor, if we get into them like we were yesterday, I mean, we're gonna have eight rods out. It's gonna be, just me and you, it's gonna be hectic. Yeah. I mean, every rod goes over at once and you're each reeling a fish and two rods are banging over and you can't do anything and you can't reel them in, so. But that's how pompano fishing is. You gotta, they come through and you gotta be ready for it. So when they're not coming through, you're sitting around. So we just ran like a half a mile to the north. Still looking for pompano, haven't had a bite, but um, Adam said he didn't get a single bite until I think 8.30 yesterday morning. So they could turn on, they could be offshore, they could be down there, and you just never know. You just gotta keep putting out your pompano rods as many as you can and just wait for them to come through and be ready. First fish of the day, saw the rod bouncing like crazy, not a pompano, ladyfish coming up. Well, you know what? We'll take it. It's always a good time you're catching ladyfish. That was our first bite of the day, so I'd rather get, get bites and not any at all. There he goes. Palm Beach release. That is less than ideal. A little ladyfish, a little bycatch, but that's always a good sign. Usually when there's a lot of ladyfish and bluefish around, pompano mixed in, also known as a poor man's tarpon. And uh, Adam can sell these at market. I've actually done a catch and cook with them. Really interesting way to prepare them is you actually have to scrape the meat off of the bones because they got a bunch of tiny little bones so you can make them into little fish cakes or fish balls. I will not be taking this guy home, but he will end up in a little market somewhere. Big school of what looks like jacks. Let's see if they want the GT ice cream. Come on, baby. Dennis, look at how close they are to the boat. That's oh, that so was a sick. giant! Really? 
eat the bird, they'll eat the diamond dick. I don't know. When they like daisy chain, I don't really think they're interested in eating. Dude, when they were yesterday, they ate my sample. They make it spooked. They see the bow and then they're spooked. Let's see. If they don't want this. They're gonna go with the stick bait. Or you know what? I think popper. Make some nice loud noise. They're underneath it. See him? Yeah, you know, it's a tough day when you can't get the jack's tea and there's literally a school of 500 fish right next to the boat and they want nothing to do with their favorite snack, the big juicy popper. Are you telling Papa Vic how to work the popper? I am telling Papa Stick Vic. Stick to your sweet potatoes there. Listen, what was the deal with that in the last, what was the deal with that in the last video? I lost a lot of respect for you guys in the comments, really. It's tough to see the generation that we're gonna, we're gonna grow up in here all eats baked potatoes. It really is. Is that fast enough for you? It's tough to see we can't catch a jack. That's not a oh. good, oh, they're on it. Oh, oh. yeah, there you go. Oh, oh, oh! <laughs> they just wanted it real fast. They did not want that popper work slow, huh? That was sick. You'd think at a school of 500 fish, one of them would eat it. I was working the popper slow, but they wanted it real fast and aggressive. I think when you turn up the water that much, when it's clear like this, you need to get a lot of whitewash so they really can't see what they're eating, you know? There you go. There's something to start the day. I mean, I could do this all day long if these things were eating. This is fun. With jacks, you actually get less per pound the bigger they are because the meat gets redder and redder. These bigger jacks don't don't tell as much. 50 cents a pound or something? I don't know. Raggedy. Whereas there's something called a U2, which is yeah. underneath two pounds. Underneath two pounds. That's the type of jacks that most commercial guys want because those, what do you think, a dollar, dollar fifty a pound? Sometimes a dollar seventy-five, yeah. Oh my goodness. Troubles are a scary game. When I first started, I was working it really slow. And like I said, I just bumped up the speed and you got to get them riled up. I walked into a tackle shop a long time ago and one guy gave me the best um, kind of analogy when it comes to catching fish on lures. He says, if you've ever played with a cat and a lure, you know when you have that little feather on string on that stick? If you're working it real slow, the cat's not interested. You really gotta get that predator into instinct and hunting mode to get him to want to strike. A bait fish is not gonna go and pop real slow. They wanna be erratic and they want it to look natural like something's fleeing for their life. So that's what you gotta do sometimes. The part I hate most about pompano fishing is I just ran the total opposite direction of where I caught a hunter pompano yesterday. And sometimes that's just how it is, and you gotta, you gotta make the move because those fish are moving non-stop. They never sit, and if they do sit, you're real lucky. What can you do? All we can Age do is fish. Old statement: It's all fishing, not catching. And when it comes to pompano, that is nothing can be more truthful. They just move around a lot. They just don't hold in one area. They're not like a group or a snapper that's gonna hold on a shipwreck or a reef. They're moving up and down the beach looking for sand fleas or doing whatever they do. Sometimes they go in the river. You can jig them in the intercoastal. Sometimes they're way back in the river by the bridges. They do what they want, when they want. There's another ladyfish. This is gonna be the third one at this spot. We moved a little bit to the north. Not what we want. I mean, Adam can sell these and make some money on it, but to put into perspective, this is like a $2 fish, whereas every pompano could be $20 or $30, depending on how big it is to buy a pound. Pompano could be anywhere from $5 to $10 a pound. Ladyfish, more around a dollar. So you're 10xing every single flip of a fish in the boat just by the species. Hold on, we're a bit. Bonefish and a ladyfish here, boys. 
Well, there are big school jacks on the beach, but yeah. Really? Look at this thing. What? what They're strong, doing? bro. That is a legit bonefish. Caught while pompano fishing. Look at that thing. I never held a bonefish oh. before. So we've moved, I don't know, five or six times today. That was the very first fish at this new spot. We just moved back down south. Whoa, is there bait on top of them? Why did they do that? They're following it, look. Oh my gosh. Go get him. Let's see. Oh. Watch out for that. There's a hard top right there. <laughs> <laughs> Is that there all day? Yeah, it's been there all day. Yeah, they're literally I, dropping, dude. How are you going to Dude, I would, get, I would get the popper. Just... Focus on the popper. Oh my gosh, this is insane. <laughs> Look at my tag. Oh. Yeah, they're hungry again. This is what you dream of, just finding a big school of jacks right here on the beach. Right next to them, you got the whole school to yourself, no one's around you, and catch them on a popper. These things kick your ass, I'll tell you that. Big jacks cannot resist the popper. They love these things. Here we got Jack Curvell. You guys can hear him grunting. I'm gonna put him close to the live mic. You could hear that. I thought that was the coolest thing. Kind of like a red drum or, or a, a black drum. Um, yeah, just so much fun. These guys get huge. And usually all the fish in one school will be around the same size. These are about, I don't know, six, six pounds. But um, you find a school of 30 pound fish on the beach, you're in for a battle right there. So I'm pretty sure we've given up on the pompano fishing. Now we're just gonna have some fun. But we found the same school of jacks. They're kind of just going down to the bottom, coming up top and just daisy chaining. I think they just do this all day long and then they'll decide to go on a hunt, go on and ravage some bait or they'll wait for some bait to swim by or something. But it's just funny to see them kind of like in this slow state because usually when we see jacks they're always bolting after bait or bolting in the inlet but right now they're just really chill. Oh! I just got fired up about that jack. <laughs> Some days you just got to come out here and have fun. They want it worked fast, Adam. They do not want it slow, I'll tell you that. So, we came out here for Pompano originally, but when that doesn't work out, you gotta go to plan B. That's why we like to bring a bunch of lures on the boat sometimes, and you gotta have fun, you know? Oh my gosh, they're all behind me. You ready? Jacks are such an underestimated fish. A ton of fun. Um, people often neglect them. They think they're a trash fish, but just coming out here, I mean, we're catching them to consume because Adam's gonna sell them, obviously, but just coming out here as a sport fish, these things are so underrated. They are the closest thing we have in Florida to something like a GT. Don't get nearly as big. These guys max yep. out yep. Same here. around Everybody's that, like that 40 to 50 pound range. But I mean, you want to talk about inshore, just brute force? It's these guys right here.
Dude, this is the best D hooker I've ever used. This thing is so legit. Cause you see how it is, has these little prongs. I could take it on the edge of the treble hook and I can just pop it out. I could pull it out. I could bop it. What else can you do? You could twist it. You could do all sorts of things with this thing. This thing is magical on the boat. All right, look at this. We're gonna have a bucket full of Jack Carvels here soon. Seems like a few of them always follow it. Get that drone footage, get that drone footage. That is sick. Oh! <laughs> Dude, he didn't get it yet. Oh yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. Oh, oh my gosh. Well, there goes that popper. Look, just to put it into perspective for you guys, there's the school of jacks, giant bull shark, that close to the beach. We are a thousand feet off of the beach. Huge bull shark just ate my jack right there. Here we are. Here's the beach. Oh! And he got it. Nice. Let's go home, boys. Flipped it. Where's the shark? Dennis threw the drone up, got some sick eats. Apparently there's a bull shark around here because he absolutely smoked one of my jacks. Um, but we got like 10 or 12 jacks right now. We're just trying out different lures, having some fun. These jacks are being like, every 10 minutes they go from being completely off to completely on. They'll come up top, they'll do their little daisy chain thing, then they'll go down deep. It's kind of weird how they just decide to turn on at certain times. I'm not gonna reel until you're ready. Go ahead. They came up to it without even touching it. Dude, they love this thing. Oh yeah, they don't want the popper, they want this thing. Cast it out the lure, not even two seconds in the water. Dennis has the drone on him. They're coming up to investigate it. I think they like something with a lip that's diving down and kind of going side to side versus that popping on top but they are really fired up right now. And anybody could do this. You could run the beach any given day, find schools of jacks. They're not always around, but if you don't find jacks, sometimes it might be pompano like Adam found yesterday. Sometimes it's mackerel, sometimes it's bluefish, ladyfish. You really never know, tarpon sometimes. Just hard, hard fighting fish, especially for their size. Yeah, listen, we turned a slow day of fishing into a fun day of fishing for a lot of people real quick. It's cool action, you get to see school 500 fish on top and they're eating lures so so it's like five dollars a fish if adam gets a dollar a pound $5. huh not $5. well not worth the five dollars if you have to use a 20 dollar lure to catch him when you lose it to a bull shark Dang. I got like 50 eats in a row for you guys. Somewhere deep down inside, Adam still enjoys this. He likes to make fun and say this is Tom Foolery, but look at him. The little kid in him is grinning right now.
As you guys see today did not go as expected. That's what fishing's about. And that is why you guys see the title of this video, Florida's most expensive fish, Florida's most valuable fish. So from Adam to be able to go from catching 100 fish yesterday to zero today, we must have run what, 20 miles of each? Easy. I would have loved to get some Pompano footage on camera, but those jacks, I mean, when it comes to a fight, I'd much rather watch jacks blowing up a popper all day. Yeah, for sure. And beach fishing this time of year is really good. You know, we can go catch pompanos on the beach, jacks, bluefish, mackerels, whatever it is. You're going to find something around the beach in the winter and early springtime. So if you guys want to book a trip with Adam, not only does he offer charters out of Jupiter, he's got his own YouTube channel. So if you guys want to get a feel for your captain, you guys can find that. I'll have it linked below, Moving Weight Fishing. I'll have his charter website. There will be plenty of more videos with us coming in the future. I appreciate right, it. Brother? Yes, sir. Yep, we're gonna film a lot of good stuff coming up. These are the pompano that Adam caught yesterday. All right, so like Vic was saying, everyone wants to be a commercial fisherman. Catch them good one day, don't catch them good the next. That's how it goes. That's fishing. You got to go every day. If you wanna, if you wanna catch fish, you got to go fishing every day. Put in the time. That's how it is. But uh, I'm getting 950 a pound for these fish. Probably had like 160 to 180 pounds, and then like 300 pounds of trash. So two thousand dollar day for us yesterday and uh, I'm in the negatives today. That's how it goes. Yeah, so your $2,000 in one day gets turns into $1,000 for two days. Yeah, and everybody on YouTube is always saying, that looks so fun, I wanna do that, how can I do this? <laughs> Listen, I'm not saying it's not fun, but it's not fun. <laughs> and I actually took a little scaler and kind of just rub some of the slime off because I'm gonna cook this, this guy with the skin on. And uh, shout out to Reed the Fishmonger on Instagram. He shot, showed me this really cool trick. What he does is he cuts the head off like this. Watch, I'll follow and I'll kind of contour around his head, around that peck fin, down around the throat. <laughs> Look at how cool that is. Now you got all that head meat that you would normally lose right above the head and that belly meat, and now it's gonna make it that much easier to fillet too. Using a eight inch Dexter flexible fillet, and you guys can actually save 20% off use my code LANDSHARK. So I just outlined my fish and now I'm on Pompano's spine. Immediately, if you've filleted a lot of fish in your lifetime, you'll notice Florida pompano are like nothing else in terms of texture, taste, oil content. They're very unique, and that is why they're so highly sought after. Because of that rich oil content and that just good fishy flavor. But when I say fishy flavor, I'm not talking about like a can of anchovies. I'm talking about like pure, fresh fish flavor. I know it sounds stupid and redundant, but look at that. You guys can just tell, I mean, look at, it just doesn't look like any other fish we have in Florida. And your boy Vic did this pompano justice. There is nothing left on that spine right there. Vic's taking care of his fish, you guys. Always. That's how it's done right there. You want to know something? I would rather rinse my flays off in this intercoastal water where it's salty than fresh water. I tell you guys all the time, never ever, it's the biggest sin in the world as a fisherman to rinse your saltwater fish off in fresh water. It's going to denature the protein. It's going to make it all stringy and just not good. How about freshwater good. fish? <coughs> freshwater fish and freshwater is fine. Are you not sure about that? I'm sure. Has he ever. eaten bass, you guys? Never oh, wait a minute. He's eating everything. Rinse. Ever, 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 ever. If I could put it on my gravestone, I'm going to have written, never rinse your saltwater fish with freshwater. That's going on my gravestone. I'll see you guys in the kitchen. That's all I need. Before we go and season our pompano, I'm gonna be making a roasted red pepper sauce to go with some pasta. And then, I don't know what you wanna call it, kinda of like a little bruschetta topping for our fish, something a little light and fresh to accompany that oily pompano. So first thing I'm doing, roasted red peppers. If you guys have never tried them, you can buy them at Publix, you can buy them at any grocery store. They come pickled in a little jar like this. Um, just, what they do is they take the red peppers and they char them. They, they roast them and they get all charred on the outside. They peel the skin and it just gives this pepper a really sweet, delicious flavor. I'm gonna take some heavy cream, put that in there.
Got a little saute pan, I'm gonna go in with some olive oil. And this is gonna be the pan we're gonna use for our sauce. We're gonna start out by sauteing some shallots. That's almost done. We got a little spiral pasta going on right there. Here's what we're gonna do with the pompano. It's gonna go on the grill. First, I'm gonna coat it in some olive oil so it doesn't stick. And I'm pretty sure this is gonna be a good fish for the grill because it's pretty firm. And when you leave the skin on a fish, it's not going to fall apart because it's got something firm holding it. Less chance of it sticking and you know flaking and falling apart all over the place. I'm also gonna oil the skin side. I'm gonna take some granulated garlic. And I'm only gonna season one side of our pompano. Aside from the taste, like when you just wanna talk about mouth-watering, how a filet looks, this looks amazing. Okay, we're gonna hit it with salt. Generous amount, because remember you're gonna grill it, so a lot of it's gonna fall off, and you really want that salt to seep down into the pompano. Pepper. Shallots have been sauteing for about three minutes. Now we're gonna go in with some minced garlic. So I'm gonna deglaze with a little chicken stock, and then we're also gonna go in with our roasted red pepper and cream. I'm not letting any of this stuff go to waste. So we're cooking on my favorite thing in the world to cook on, the Camp Chef Apex Grill. Not only is this thing a pellet grill, so you can smoke stuff on it, or if you want indirect heat, and you get that smoky flavor on your fish, but tonight we're cooking on the propane burners inside it, because I wanna get those nice grill marks on this pompano. So I'm gonna cook it starting on the flesh side down instead of the skin side. And we're gonna go right onto the grill grates just like that. Going off the second one and then close her up. Okay, so I'd say it's been about three minutes on the flesh side. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a peek. Make sure that we're not burning up. Look at this. It's not sticking at all, baby. Watch that. Oh yeah. So we got a little grill mark on there, got a little char. Look at that, baby, come on. There's not a lot of fish you can do that with effectively, so easily without having to release it. One of the reasons Pompano is so popular. Okay, time for the bruschetta topping. If all the Italians out there watching, I know it's not bruschetta, bruschetta. And I don't think this is proper bruschetta, but we'll see. Um, we got some feta cheese. Got some grape tomatoes, basil, minced garlic, gonna go in with the feta, and I'm gonna do a little bit of crushed red pepper. Not too much, about that much. Let's do some lemon juice. Put in a little bit of olive oil in here. And now we mix. And that's why I wanna mix everything together because a lot of these things in here are fragile, like the feta cheese, you don't want it to get too mushy. I'm gonna go straight in with our roasted red pepper cream sauce. I added some basil in there as well. All right, pretty sure our fish is done. Look at those babies. Oh yeah. Look at that, guys. That is some good looking fish right there. We got the Florida pompano. We got our roasted red pepper pasta. We'll just get a little bit of that fish topping right across, just like this. How about that? And there we go. Time to dig in. I'm so used to not holding a camera anymore because we brought Dennis on. I don't even know if I'm in the frame. It's been so nice um, having him on board, but after a long day of filming, I wanted to cook this guy a nice meal. So his first time ever eating Florida pompano. Let's see. Same day video. Eating. Here. Mm -hmm. Oh, you went straight for the pin bones. Mm-hmm. Careful. It's so much different than snapper. Mm -hmm. Snapper, grouper, it's so much different. It's a very simple plate, but damn, it's good. It's cooked well. I mean, there's nothing not to love, you know? It's great. I see it flaking off of there. It's 
really good. I want to say I eat pompano once a year, twice a year. As you see, they're very elusive. Um, we don't get them that often. We don't fish for them that often, but they really are a good treat. So that right there, that's the fish's bloodline. That's probably the least desired part of most fish, but fresh like this, Adam caught these fish yesterday. It's almost a disservice to the fish to remove that bloodline when they're fresh. It is amazing. <laughs> See, we're being honest with you guys. A lot of people think that we sometimes like fake or embellish. If we don't like something, we don't like it. Brooke doesn't like the skin. I like the skin, but there's nothing wrong with it. Um, if you... It's two completely different flavors. Absolutely. It's like eating two different kinds of fish on your same plate. I, your I, skin is that. It's like canned tuna and canned anchovies. If you like canned sardines or tuna or anchovies, you'd probably like the fish skin. If you're someone who does not like canned fish, like Brooke, didn't grow up on it, you're probably not gonna like this. It's not like it's a bad taste, it's just a very different taste than one that I do not prefer, so. I would rather just eat the fish off of the skin. This is delicious. Um, it was funny because last night when Adam had called Victor and told him how many pompano he caught, I was like, I really wanted to go, but at the same time I had so much to get done today, so I chose not to go. And it's just so crazy that one day you can catch so many and the next day nothing. But I'm really glad that we're still eating it because it's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. So good. Yeah. And to think, I didn't want to make a video today. You, you just gotta, you gotta have good people in your ring. Like Dennis and Adam were like, dude, you gotta film a video. You gotta make it. And guess what? We made a great day from sun up to sundown. We got it done. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Like I said, if you guys are ever in the Jupiter area, you're looking for a good charter, Adam's the man. I'll also have his YouTube channel linked below. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll catch you in the next one.